Thursday. Good morning, PA Stubby staff, clients and friends joining us. I'm really well rested because I was off Monday. Much needed vacation. Although I was busy doing work, you know, research for these classes and what's, you know, what's good for us to, you know, the curriculum and how do we grow as composers, as music supervisors, all that kind of stuff. So since there's no new assignment, I do want to look at one of the most famous movies in the world. And, um, and then tomorrow we're going to see the results revisited because we did this a few years ago. So uh, we're going to go back in time to a galaxy far, far away. Today we're going to relook look at Star Wars. <laughs> I assume you guys have heard of Star Wars. This is not like Truffaut's Jewels and Gem. This is uh, it made a little bit more money. Um, this is the first one, but it's the fourth episode, right? A New Hope. So we know George Lucas, right? He's 77 years old today. Uh, not today, but now um, he is. And uh, American filmmaker, right? American, uh, you know, screenwriter and producer and uh, entrepreneur i mean best known for probably star wars but did a lot of some other some other great stuff and also the indiana jones franchises you know he along with spielberg and um, coppola those guys uh, were very influential this is science fiction right but it's not it's not a movie about the future so what he explained and this is this was really revolutionary because you know we think of like george lucas as you know very commercial and very all that kind of stuff and that's you know that's true there's nothing wrong with being commercial but uh he he had a real vision because now we see star wars and we think money box office and all that stuff but when he came out with this movie nobody saw that nobody really believed in that that was this was not this was he was thinking very differently considering what the time was going on we've done so much film history so much films uh, you know with the 60s we know the the new hollywood system movies more for adults you know you know polanski and and filmmakers that were you know dennis hopper with easy rider they, they were pushing boundaries here especially by the 70s by the 70s we really get explicit content vulgarity i mean everything is just out there so that's what's kind of popular in the 70s um you know rocky horror picture show it's 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 really crazy stuff so for somebody to say, well, I have a movie, you know, about about space, about a, a space opera, that's what they call it, because it takes place in space, but it's mostly, you know, about regular feelings, romantic feelings. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of like a, a Disney movie in space. Um, nobody wanted to do that. So that that's really revolutionary thinking on George Lucas's part. Um, he said at some point, like, if you can tap into the mind of a 10 year old girl, you can make a fortune in this business uh, because they're the ones that, you know, um, will buy the product and all that stuff. So uh, easy for us to see now. OK, a space movie, but really crazy to think about that. We always have to think about, well, was that as easy as we think about as, as we think it was? But no, they actually did a lot of struggle. And what he wanted to do was to kind of take Flash Gordon. Uh, Flash Gordon was a very um, popular you know, space opera as well, um, comic strip. It first came out in 1934, uh, all Alex Raymond stuff. And uh, they wouldn't sell him the rights to Flash Gordon. So he said, I'm gonna make my own Flash Gordon. I always like these stories too, right? Because when somebody says no, or when there's limitations, it forces you to be creative and say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll create this. And he did, he, he wrote the script and he, he spent you know so much time developing these characters and um and he used his own money because after you know his first one was thx 1138 but then his real hit came with american graffiti 1973 about about his youth in modesto and because of that success because that was critically acclaimed and got five academy award nominations um including best director he had a little bit of clout and so they were like okay fine we'll we'll fund your little space opera movie, whatever that's going to be. But it was very minimally funded. I mean, he got like 140000 to write, direct, produce it. But he was smart because he said, well, I'll take the merchandising, you know, um, so 40%, give me that of the merchandising uh, 
uh, proceeds and uh, turned out to be a great idea. Of course, back then they were like, well, no one's going to buy toys. People don't buy toys for for movies coming out. I mean, that's a huge, again, this is 1970s thinking. These are executive producers saying, you know, okay, fine. If you want, if you want 40% of it, that's fine. Well, he got the last laugh, of course. I mean, but he also used his own money from American Graffiti. Cause, so this was kind of low budget in the sense. It ended up costing about 11 million to make, you know, but I mean, it made about 700 million and it continues to make money. But, and he got some, because some of this looks very much like Space Odyssey 2001, Kubrick's movie, right? Several years earlier. So he did hire some of those designers because, um, you know, I mean, that looked like the real thing or better than the real thing. So we, I mean, we know the plot of Star Wars. It's, it's pretty, you know, Princess Leia is held captive by Darth Vader. And so Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, and, you know, friends, Han Solo, they, they go and rescue her. And the scene we're going to look at is the cantina scene. This is a fun scene. Um, it, it's, it, this is what I want to score. I'm not going to have you score the opening credits. I thought about this years, you know, a year ago, because I was like, it would be cool, a cool experiment to score the opening credits with, with, you know, with the text scrolling with a different theme. But that was just an idea. That's something to think about too, but that's not the assignment. But because it's so iconic, the, the, sco you know, the score and the text, um, it would it'd be kind of funny to hear it with some other different music. But I, I, I thought we'd t look at the space cantina scene or the cantina scene. This is on the Tatooine Island, which was filmed in Africa and Tunisia, but inside it was, it was filmed in England on, you know, in a studio. And uh, the music in this is really great. And we'll talk about the score. And uh, why don't we just take a look at the scene first? So that's by John Williams. I should back up a little bit because uh, originally George Lucas wanted pre-existing music, very much like Kubrick did with 2001. That he used classical music, he used Strauss, he used you know um, composers that had already passed away, and that's what Lucas supposedly wanted. There's many stories, conflicting stories, but what, from what I could gather from research, he wanted that. So he wanted John Williams to help him, uh, you know, as uh, you know, as a consultant. But John Williams instead wrote him a terrific score. Of course, John Williams was fresh off the first blockbuster, which was Jaws, right? 1975. So this is, you know, that was a few years ago, and he won the Oscar for that. So we think of John Williams being huge today, too, and he is. But, you know, back then he was just a working composer, and that Spielberg said, hey, well, you know, my friend John Williams, George Lucas, you guys want to talk and meet? And... And they did, and he wrote um, music for this that you know, that everyone knows. It's one of the most famous scores of all time. But this scene in particular is hilarious, right? Because what does it sound like? It's it's swing music, right? I mean, we've done. This is why I like to mix up all the classes to see, you know, all music kind of comes back to a source. Of, you know, Bach, all those things. We've done classes on Duke Ellington, the, the you know the king of swing, Glenn Miller. We've talked about these guys, uh, Tommy Dorsey and Artie Shaw. We didn't do a class on Benny Goodman, but um, we've talked about Benny Goodman, but this is 1930s swing music. What's that doing in a 1977 space opera thing? They, he, he really wanted him to make it sound like space alien jazz music. That's what it sounds like. I mean, but it's, so it's got trumpets, saxophones, clarinets, uh, a Rhodes piano, and a Caribbean steel drum and then a synthesizer and another drum, and then a lot of reverb to make it sound, you know, futuristic, alien-like. Um, it's got such a great tune. Um, mostly, it, you know, it sounds a lot like Sing 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 by Benny Goodman, which I've played in several classes, but see if you can hear the influence that John Williams got from, uh, it, this is actually a Louis Prima song, but just take a listen to this. <laughs> So 
sounds very close to the John Williams, right? I mean, you know, not, it, it sounds like obviously he was influenced by this because as we know, John Williams started off as a, you know, a jazz pianist pretty much um, in New York. So the scene is just so much fun. So why don't we take a look sans music just without anything? Could be so weird, huh? I mean, with, with dark, scary music, it could sound like a whole different scene because the scene with the music is quirky, fun, jazz, you know, jazz-like swing music. Um, yeah, let's make it that. Let's stay in that realm. Um, you know, if we did thrash or slash or music, you could do that, but that all of a sudden doesn't make it a light movie, a, you know, a, a nice, you know, Disney-like movie. And George Lucas wanted to go in that direction. I mean, it's a PG movie. It's it's very appropriate for all all audiences. Um, uh, so don't do Sing 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 because I already played that as an example. But um, something in that realm of of that uh, John Williams was, I think would be terrific. So I hope you enjoyed that. Tomorrow we're going to see your results for Star Wars that you guys did with the cantina scene. Very interesting big band music, right? What's that doing? John Williams put that scene in there. Benny Goodman influence and stuff that we just talked about. So uh, tomorrow we'll see your results revisited. Okay, have a great rest of the day. See you tomorrow. Bye.